hiring a sex worker the answer to improving your sex life and performance? It's worked for some of my clients and I'm going to tell you how and why. I'm also going to share a step-by-step -step guide to hiring an escort and what you can expect from the experience. Now, it is no secret that paying money for sex is taboo in our culture, but apparently people have been doing it since forever, hence why it's known as the oldest profession. So it's time to lift the veil and tell you what it's actually like and how to do it right. And make sure you watch until the end of this video because there are some critical do's and don'ts you will not want to miss. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and click that button. Now I release a new video every week and I leave no stone unturned when it comes to giving you all the sex and relationship advice that you need, even if it's a little non-conventional like today's topic. Hiring a sex worker isn't something that I always recommend, but sometimes it really is the best and simplest way to get things going again, especially if you've been dealing with a dry spell or some deep sexual insecurities. For a lot of people, getting out there and having sex with someone new can feel like jumping off a cliff. Scary, intimidating, you don't know how much it's gonna hurt when you'll impact. Not only that, but it can feel like you don't know exactly what you're diving into after you jump. Is the other person gonna be satisfied? Will they have the same needs and desires as me? Does everything work like I remember it? Am I gonna get mercilessly rejected that it's gonna have me feeling worse than I did before? The thing about hiring a sex worker, if you do it the right way, is that you can pretty much guarantee that what you're diving into is crisp, inviting, refreshing water. And that can be a very comforting feeling for those who are unsure about how to get back into the sexual saddle. And hiring sex workers isn't limited to those going through a sex drought. There are many reasons that men and women and non-binary folks have hired these professionals. Maybe you're looking for some companionship to soothe feelings of loneliness, or you just crave physical touch and you don't currently have access to it at home. Maybe you like the idea of a truly no strings attached sexual connection that doesn't require emotional maintenance. Whatever your reason may be, here's my step-to-step -step guide to working with an escort. Step one, be clear on your expectations. The first step to hiring pretty much anyone is figuring out what you're looking for. And there are a lot of different reasons to pay for sex and you're gonna wanna find a sex worker who can meet your specific reasons and needs. Because when it comes to sex workers, the services really do vary. There are people you can hire to be arm candy at a big event, you know, impress all your colleagues, but they're probably not gonna be the same professionals who you'd hire to say, pee on your face. No matter what you're looking for, there is a person for the job. But the first step to finding them is getting really clear on what you're looking for. Before working with a sex worker, make sure that your needs are appropriate and the professional that you're talking to can reasonably fill those needs. Once you're clear on what it is that you want, the next step is to find it. Which brings me to step two, do your research. How does one hire a sex worker anyway? Well, there are a few ways to do it and some are safer than others. First, it's a good idea to get familiar with the laws in your area. Some of the time hiring companionship is legal, but direct solicitation for sex is not. And if that sounds complicated, you can bet it only gets more complicated from there. And let's be real, just because something is illegal doesn't mean that it's immoral. So do what you will with that information. I'm not recommending you do anything illegal. I'm just saying bad laws deserve to be broken. When it comes to hiring a sex worker, agencies often provide the most secure options. You can easily find escort agencies online and you can work with them to find someone who's a great fit for you. Do this in advance. It's like scheduling an appointment, okay? It's not gonna be just, your dream woman's just available because you're horny at 11 p.m., okay? By going through an agency, you're working with professionals who are more protected, right? Because they have an employer, essentially. Often provides them security, often handles the money, often gives them a bodyguard. They also, therefore, tend to be more expensive because the whole organization needs to take a cut in order to keep things running. The bright side is that these sex workers come with reviews, which you can check out. Thus, you can be more reassured that you're gonna get the professional experience that you want. Soliciting someone on the street is a far riskier option, and these women are often in less comfortable positions with more exposure to violence and legal threats and you know, being hassled by police. There are also independent escorts, so they don't work for an agency, but they still have websites that they typically run themselves. Again, make sure to do research, ask for reviews, any possible complaints, it is always better to go with someone who you can vet at least a little bit. And by the way, be prepared for her to vet you too. Step three 
preparation. So you've reached out to an escort online, what's next? Well, you can expect that many agencies and independent workers alike may require a deposit and probably some sort of screening process. Don't get offended, it's just part of guaranteeing her safety. It's important to let the sex worker know exactly what you're looking for and make sure ahead of time that they're okay with any activities that you have in mind. Once you've both vetted each other and agreed to work together, you set a time and a place. It is important to keep in mind that on top of their rate, expenses for the evening from accommodation to food or drink to any specific lingerie you want her to wear or sex toys you want to use, which should be all new and in the box when she gets there, you are going to be paying for everything else on top of her rate. Now, when it comes to getting ready to meet with a sex worker, you should prepare as if you are going on any other date. Shower, trim, make yourself presentable. Just because you're paying for it doesn't mean that you get to just show up all like scrubby and nasty. In fact, she may ask you to shower again in front of her. Do it. The experience will go best if you show mutual respect. Another thing that's important to know is a lot of guys think that maybe like I'll have a drink or two to take the edge off before meeting. Not a good idea. A lot of women, myself included, see men who have been drinking as unpredictable, scary, like could be violent. People in general, when they're drunk, put other folks in vulnerable positions because they don't have the same sense of themselves and self-control. Also, would you do that on a regular date? Like show up having had three drinks? Probably not. So it's not great to do it on a paid date either. And now what to expect when you actually are meeting her. Step four, the encounter. First things first, have your payment ready. If you're feeling a little awkward about how to hand it to her, especially maybe if you're meeting in a public place or for the first time, it is totally okay to just name that. Say, I have the payment ready and ask her how she would like you to hand it over. Just, she's the professional, just ask her, how it's done. Someone going in to get their first tattoo is naturally gonna ask their tattoo artist a lot of questions. How does this work? What should I do? How do I care for this afterward? How much do I pay you? What should I expect? Ask the professional, they're there to answer your questions. You don't have to pretend you know everything. Overall, the most important thing to remember when spending time with a sex worker is that communication is key. Ta -ta -ta! We should have like a little blinking sign for every time I say communication is key on this channel because it's like once every video. Communication. Remember, she's there to provide you with a good experience and all you have to do is help her do that. Be respectful, be courteous, let her know how she can provide this great service to you. I mean, if there's anyone who you can be honest with about your needs and desires, it is someone that you are literally paying to fulfill them, right? So don't be afraid to share exactly what you need to feel comfortable, aroused, and satisfied. Now you can choose to spend your allotted time with her however you both agree. Whatever you want, clearly just voice it and ask if it's a service that she can provide. If you wanna take time and talk and ask questions, that's up to you. If you wanna get straight to business, you can let her know that too. But know that any and all chit chat and small talk takes place on the clock. Some of my escort friends said that they spend more time talking to their clients than having any sort of physical touch. Or maybe they have sex first and then they spend like an hour hearing what's going on in their lives, connecting, like coaching them. It's all good. You're allowed to ask for anything that you want. In order to get the most out of your experience, just try to be as clear and honest with yourself and her as possible. At the same time, there are some other things that you should never ask for, like sex without a condom. Condoms are a must, they protect her and you. Also, any form of violence is off the table and that can also include BDSM. Remember, she doesn't wanna go home with marks, scratches, bruises from your encounter with her. If you want to have a BDSM experience, make sure that you go to someone who specializes in that. The service is for you, but both of your boundaries and both of your comfort are equally important to make sure it goes well. Another thing to keep in mind is that for many professionals, kissing isn't something that they offer. It's not something they're comfortable with. Maybe they save that for their husband or their girlfriend or their boyfriend. Some refuse to do specific sex acts and it is important to be respectful of her limitations. As a general rule, just treat your sex worker as you would any other person that you are paying for a service. Sex is a super intimate act, so it can get confusing sometimes around what the boundaries are. But let's use an example from a completely different field. Think about your sex worker the same way you think about your hairstylist. You book an appointment for a trim at 2 p.m., you show up on time, showered clean, you treat your hairdresser politely, you receive the agreed upon service. Could your hairdresser make a sudden twist and dye your pubes bright pink? Like probably she could, but it isn't appropriate to ask her. And you certainly wouldn't ask for any personal information or expect them to stay in touch by like texting or phone calls between appointments, right? Follow that logic and you will be just fine. Which brings me to our last step, which is step five, after your date. 
When your date is over, there's not much to do other than say a polite goodbye. If you were happy with the service, sex workers do appreciate tips, especially if she's at an agency because she's paying them a significant portion of her rate. If you appreciated what she did and you'd like to see her again, let her know. You'll likely have to book with the agency, but just like with any other work, it's always good to know that you have a satisfied customer. And if you didn't have the best time, that's okay. It's important to remember that sex often just comes down to chemistry, whether you paid for it or not. It happens. And it isn't her fault if she wasn't able to meet or exceed your exact expectations. She still showed up and did her job. Finding a sex worker that works for you could take some trial and error. You may have to try with a lot of different professionals, just like you would with like a therapist or a hairdresser. So if you aren't feeling the connection with the first person you try, it is very reasonable to keep looking for a better fit. So there you have it what you can actually expect from working with an escort. Now, whether or not that's for you, that's something that only you can answer. And there are plenty of valid reasons to hire someone for sex. And although many people find it to be a satisfying way to spend an evening, it's important to understand that it really isn't a long term solution if you're looking for a deep, intimate connection. And remember, my team of coaches is always here and available to help you achieve your personal sexual best because everyone deserves to have a great sex life and to have hot sex and to have epic need fulfilling desire mind-blowing evenings whether they pay for them or not if you're interested in working one-on-one -on -one with me or my team click the link in the description check us out thank you so much for tuning in i'll see you here next week Mwah. bye